So we've been talking about how we're bad at effective forecasting. We've been talking about how we hedonically adapt over time. And you might be asking the question, OK, how do I deal with that? How do I predict better? How can I shut off hedonic adaptation? And sadly, we cannot shut off these processes. They're just features of our mind, but we can figure out better ways to deal with them. And that's what we're going to talk about now. How can we deal with our hedonic adaptation and affectively forecast better? And that means we finally get to the thing I was promising you before, which is that we get to have our psych pro tips where we think about how to put this into practice. Yay, and fireworks. It's all very exciting. OK, psych pro tip number one is that if you really want to take hedonic adaptation seriously, it suggests that when you're thinking about how you can buy things to be happier, you should focus on buying experiences, not material goods. What do I mean by that? Well, we talked about the fact that if you buy some material good, like a wonderful car, you're just going to get used to it over time. Today's car is going to be tomorrow's boring car that's in your garage. And that's true, again, for everything, you know, whether it's new shoes that you buy or a new video game or whatever. You're just going to get used to it. But that is what we get used to when it comes to a material good. It's this physical thing that's going to stick around. We don't, it turns out, get used to experiences as much. Experiences like things like you go to a concert, you go to a cool museum, you go on a vacation, you, know, you take a vacation to the Caribbean or Europe or something. You don't have time to get used to it because most experiences don't last very long. You know, maybe the vacation's five days, concert's like a couple hours. Like, it doesn't last long enough for you to get used to it. And that means the happiness boost that we get from experiences is much better and much longer lasting than the happiness boost that we get from material goods. Again, I love Dan Gilbert's work, so I can't help but quote him. He was talking about the new car before, about how the new car sticks around to disappoint you. He says, this new car sticks around to disappoint you, but a trip to Europe is over. It evaporates. It has the good sense to go away, and you're left with nothing but a wonderful memory. So if we want to take hedonic adaptation seriously, it means we need to be investing in experiences, not material stuff. The kind of happiness bang for our buck that we get is better with experiences. That's psych pro tip number one. Psych pro tip number two is that we can fight adaptation a little bit, not get rid of it, but we can kind of thwart it a little bit through the process of what's called savoring. What do I mean by savoring? Well, again, you know, here's Beyonce's car. She's probably had this car for a while. She's probably hedonically adapted to it. But she could turn on her happiness boost that she gets from it by kind of thinking, like, man, this is a baller car. Like, the stereo system's amazing, and the leather's really soft. Right? If she really is in the moment where she's mindfully paying attention to the positive features, she can get some happiness boost from it. And that's the act of savoring. It's like stepping outside of an experience to be like, wait a minute, hang on. This is a really cool experience. Like, how would I talk to somebody about this? How would I tell my friends about it? How, how, what am I actually experiencing in this moment? That's the act of savoring. The problem is that we don't savor very much. All good experiences, whether it's having a delicious hot chocolate, riding in a car, experiencing those new shoes you bought, like we could pay more attention to it mindfully. We just tend not to do that. So the act of savoring is really turning that on. And one great way that I think we can use technology to savor a little bit more is to think about using our phones to kind of get us in the savoring habit. You know, if you've ever traveled on vacation somewhere, you often probably take your phone out to like, like, like take a picture of what you're looking at. And when you do that, you're often very mindful about it. You're like, oh, what does this look like? I want to capture it, right? Like the act of using our phones can help us get into the mindset of savoring and paying attention to things. I think this is why people sometimes positively take pictures of you know, the delicious foods they eat or something like that. Done the right way, that can let us savor. What's the right way? It's not doing it in a performative way. Like you're really trying to be in the moment. You're not thinking about like, well, how my, my friend will react to this, and like, like, what is somebody going to think about this? You really need to be savoring the experience and the thing itself, not like kind of doing it in a performative way. So that's the way to use selfies to savor better. That's psych pro tip number two. Psych pro tip number three is that we can also thwart hedonic adaptation through a process of what's called negative visualization. This is something that the ancient Stoics back in the day came up with. You can visualize the bad thing to get some happiness boost. How are we going to define negative visualization? Well, we're going to call it this act of thinking about a bad counterfactual of a good thing. So the opposite of the good thing, what would it be if it wasn't good? This sounds a little bit weird. It sounds like you're kind of like throwing away in your brain all the good things in life. But it can kind of, in a weird way, cause you to appreciate them yet again. One of the most famous cases of negative visualization uh, was this famous kind of holiday movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Have you, any of you seen It's a Wonderful Life? Do you guys know the premise? Show of hands, some of you. So for those that haven't seen it, basically the Jimmy Stewart character, he's like sad about his life. 
And like, I think this angel or somebody comes and basically shows him what his life would be like if he was never existed. And he's like, oh my gosh, this counterfactual of me never existing would be really bad. I'm so happy with my life. I love it, right? That's negative visualization. And it sounds strange, but it can powerfully make you appreciate things that you don't often appreciate. So to see the power of this, let's try it. I'm guessing that most of you uh, have a, a phone right now, like a, some sort of cell phone with you. I want you to think about what would happen if when you reach for your phone the next time, it was dead. You get the like brick of death, it's just gone. And you have this moment of realizing like, oh my gosh, I had all my contacts on there, I didn't really back them up, my photos are gone, how am I gonna call somebody later? I don't even know what I'm gonna do this summer in my program because I need my phone, right? But you don't, that didn't happen. Probably when you took your phone, it's gonna be okay. And that was just a silly little toy example, but my guess is the next time you pick your phone up, having done that, you'll have a little bit more savoring for it. You won't have hedonically adapted to it as much, right? That's negative visualization. It happens really fast, but it can be super powerful. And the data suggests that it can like lead us to appreciate things we might have taken for granted for a while. Ku and colleagues looked at this in the context of romantic relationships, something that we definitely get hedonically adapted to, especially if you've been dating somebody for a while, you tend to take that person for granted. And so this is what they tried to look at. They brought couples in and had them write for 15 minutes about a negative visualization. What if you never met your partner? Like, what if you never got together? Like, what would your life be like? Versus a control where you write about just like how you actually met your partner. So they're both doing the writing, but one is thinking about like, oh man, if I never met my partner, all these bad things would happen. And then they look at overall how happy people are and how happy they are in their relationship. And what you find is that people are both happier in the moment, they have a higher mood, and they're happier when their relationship, with their relationship when they do this quick little 15 minute negative visualization. So it can cause you to re-like something that you've forgotten was really valuable in your life. So those are just some strategies about how you don't shut off hedonic adaptation, but you can kind of work with it a little bit to get that happiness boost that you used to get at the beginning. You can stop yourself from getting so used to stuff. Mm -hmm.